Hello there, summoners. We hope you're all safe and sound grinding the solo queue ladder indoors. And do you ever feel like you're not improving anymore or that the quality of your gameplay might even be getting worse? Have you started resorting to complaining about teammates and becoming a keyboard warrior during these tough times? Mistakes aren't always obvious, and if they were, people would be making a lot less of them, we hope. But chances are that you're making some of these same mistakes every game without seeing what the real problem is. Well, rest assured, because we've all been through it once or twice, and we're here to talk you through it in our latest video by going through the top 10 mistakes that noobs make. For our question of the day, what was the one thing that you learned that helped you improve the most as a player? Doesn't matter if you're bronze or silver, there's always something new to learn that can get you to the next level of your game. Now, without further ado, our top 10. Number one, fighting without a purpose. Do you ever ask yourself why your team was unable to secure an objective after winning a full on 5v5 team fight? The answer is pretty simple. There was probably nothing to fight for in the first place. When team fighting or skirmishing, you always wanna fight for a specific objective. It can be as big as the illustrious Baron or as small as an early game red buff. When choosing to fight over an objective, you're choosing to fight for an advantage, no matter how big or small, making a win that much more meaningful. From that point, you can start to figure out how to play with that advantage and secure even more fights that will snowball the game. Number two, overstaying after winning a team fight. Now this one is an absolute classic. Your team just won a fight, took the Baron and started sieging immediately without spending any of the gold that they just earned. Before you know it, your team has been aced, stripped clean of their Baron buffs and the gold lead and the enemy is marching straight into your base. The optimal play here is pretty simple. Keep a tab on the opponent's death timers and just how much damage you'll be able to do before they respawn. Pushing advantages is important, but resetting allows you to spend the gold and reassess the map after recalling. Number three is playing impatiently when you have perfect vision. Once your team has established vision and your teammates are pushing out waves again, the support and jungler should patiently sit on top of vision wards and look for picks on unsuspecting enemies. If done correctly, they should be able to find a few cheeky picks that give your team the time and space to take objectives immediately afterwards. Basically, you always want to use the element of surprise if you have full vision control. Sitting around that tier two mid lane turret waiting for something to happen puts all that vision to waste and gives your opponents all the time to respond. It might be tempting to use your gold advantage to just keep pushing your opponent, but depending on the compositions, this approach can be far from foolproof. Remember to use Fog of War to your advantage and keep on the pressure in a more subtle way. It's not only more effective, but it's also safer and it leaves your team open to significantly less counterplay. Number four is the Baron Dance. We're not talking about salsa or tango here, though Baron dances can be just as fine and complex when executed correctly. Have you and your team aimlessly danced around Baron hoping for something to happen? Maybe nobody's willing to pull the trigger and the enemy just full pushes mid, taking away both your vision and positional advantage, leaving your team with little options but to rotate a full tempo behind in hopes of saving the base. It's a common story in solo queue games everywhere. Baron dances aren't exactly easy. There are three primary ways to approach the Baron dance, so listen up if you just can't stop stepping on your teammates' feet. Start and burn, start and turn, pick off and start. These methods are on a case-by-case -case basis. Do you have Varus and Azir on your team? You probably just wanna burn the Baron before the enemy has time to respond. Do you have the superior hard engage in CC chain with champions like Thresh and Nautilus? Then you're probably looking to start the Baron before surprising the enemy with a quick engagement. This same idea can be applied to waiting for a pick, relating back to our previous point of using vision wards to lure the enemy team into face checking. That's all good and sound, but here's a disclaimer. Baron dances are an art that even LCS teams haven't mastered yet. That's right, even teams as strong as Cloud9 can struggle with this concept. The most important thing to keep in mind is this. Focus on the mid wave and make sure it's pushed in before you ever start the deadly dance for Baron. Don't start a ramming though. Mid should serve as a pressure point and an appetizer. An effective team fight or objective secure will always be the main course. Number five is playing aggressively when your team isn't ready to attack on the other side of the map. You've probably seen this before. Your super fed Camille is going to town on the enemy top laner, but keeps pushing in only to be ganked by three or four people before raging in team chat that your teammates aren't doing anything. This is a common misconception for carries in solo queue games everywhere. You need to put pressure on the enemy at key moments when your team is in position to make something else happen on the map. If they're not ready, just back off and wait until they establish the control to take a necessary objective or tower dive. 
A common mid or late game situation is split pushing bot, knowing that the enemy jungler could come and stop you at any moment. If your team is ready, be ready to ping them to commit to a 4v3 Baron fight. You might die all the same as before, but your team is reaping all the advantages from the aggressive play. In the event that they don't react by ganking you, you're just putting more pressure on the map that the enemy will eventually have to respond to, leaving them less room to make optimal decisions. Number six is analyzing the strengths of your own team composition. It's easy to pick champions that are strong and in the meta, but it's not easy to correctly apply all the champion strengths at hand to orchestrate a clean victory. There's a lot of ways to go about analyzing a team comp, but let's do it this way. Your team is ahead and looking to siege. These are the three general approaches towards tower sieging based on your compositional strengths. If you have long range, think Caitlyn or Tristana at 80 carry, look to siege down a single lane since it's the easiest and most effective tactic in solo queue. Long range mages like Lux or even Velkaz also warrant this straightforward strategy, though the former is more flexible. In the event that the enemy doesn't have great wave clear, this is the easiest way to melt towers. If you have a split pushing champion, look toward aggressive vision control and playing two lanes at once to best use the pressure. Similar to the Camille example from before, look to make aggressive plays when the enemy tries to punish them for overextending. Ending. If you have great pick CC, like Thresh's Death Sentence or Nautilus's Dredge Line, play in the jungle and sit on vision wards. As mentioned before, mid lane champions like Lux can also aid in this effort through light binding to secure a quick pick. Someone's going to have to walk in eventually and you'll be able to take towers with the following numbers advantage. It's important to remember that none of these styles are particularly stronger than the other. It's all about knowing what your team at the present time does. A well-oiled machine that does the job it's supposed to will always produce results. Number seven is contesting scuttle crabs or the enemy jungler when you have no lane priority. This concept was more important when scuttle crabs spawned earlier, but there are still moments where you path parallel to the enemy jungler and end up at the same crab. Most of the time, one team will have priority in either mid and top lane or mid and bot lane, leaving one jungler with all the advantages. Too often though, the jungler without lane priority will play greedily for the scuttle crab before getting collapsed upon and killed for playing too aggressively. This can also be applied to contesting enemy jungle camps like raptors or an early enemy red buff. If you're the jungler and your lanes are clearly not in control of their lane, you just have to give up the crab most of the time. If the jungler is on your team and you can't help him, it's best to spam the danger ping and hope he gets the message. Anytime this happens, it's best to just concede the scuttle crab at hand and rotate for the opposite river crab. There's a time and a place for pressure, and recognizing the ebb and flow of the game will make you much stronger in the long run. Number eight is not mechanically executing on plays. At League of Legends' very core, mechanical execution is the most important thing when it comes to climbing the solo queue ranks. Mechanics as a word can be a bit vague and a bit overused, but generally, it means knowing what to do and actually executing the action with near perfection around the enemy. In solo queue, your team could be at a disadvantageous situation, but your champion might have the key to victory within its own strengths. A good example is the enemy team being ahead with a great team fighting composition, while you're ahead on a strong split pusher. The game might seem tough, but if played poorly, you can take the game by yourself with perfect tower pressure. The reason that high elo players are able to climb lower ranks so easily is because in each game that they are winning or losing, they are given something like 20 to 30 possible situations to play well and either accelerate the game or turn it completely on its head. Eventually, especially given their status as high elo players, one of these situations is going to fall into their favor no matter the deficit. If this sounds like me saying get good, I kind of am. If you're patient and play well when the opportunity is given to you, you will typically be rewarded. The most important part is being able to recognize those opportunities, so having no hands or no monitor turned on isn't the best excuse either, summoners. Number nine is not reviewing your gameplay. You've heard this a million times by now, whether it's your favorite pro player, streamer, or the casters at the LCS. You need to watch your gameplay in order to improve. When you look back at macro decisions you made in the mid and late game, or small mechanical decisions that lost you the laning phase, it becomes much easier to compartmentalize your decisions and apply them to the next game. Like any type of studying, if you take notes and apply your newfound knowledge, you will see results. If you wanted to get an A in math, you wouldn't keep doing the same thing over and over again, right? Take notes, review your gameplay, and find the solo queue climbing formula for you. Number 10 is blaming your teammates. This one really grinds our gears. At any given time, something could be your teammate's fault, but it's completely out of your control. Yeah, that 0-9 Yasuo is certainly going to make the game harder, but so is complaining about it. Regardless of how bad your team is, there is almost always something you can do to make up for their lack of impact or even augment their total effect in the game. 
Have you ever considered that even though your Yasuo is zero and nine, there's a possibility that you could make your opponent go zero and nine? Covering and making up for your teammates is part of a team game and your impact will always be under your control. Think of that zero nine Yasuo as a training weight. It's games like this that push your individual abilities to new heights, preparing you for the next time a game feels unwinnable. That concludes this video on your top 10 mistakes that noobs make. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. If you guys want more content to help you improve, check out ProGuides.com, where we've teamed up with pro players to create guides designed to take your game to the next level. Also keep an eye on our YouTube channel where we're constantly uploading new content like this. Remember to stay inside and stay safe and good luck on the Rift. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you